All right, ladies and gentlemen, this class recording has started. So, back on Thursday of last week, we started in on section 3.4, dealing with free fall. And on Thursday, we did the demonstration with, uh, first, we dropped the book. And in dropping the book, we saw that gravity causes a constant acceleration. And we'll review that a little bit today when we do the lab, okay? Uh, and then we dropped the book and, or we dropped the rubber ball in the piece of paper. And at first, they didn't hit the ground at the same time. But then we scrunched up the piece of paper, right? And we dropped the book and the, and the piece of paper scrunched up. And we found out that if we can uh, negate the effect of air resistance or minimize the effect of air resistance, gravity causes a constant acceleration. The same constant acceleration for all objects that are under the effect of that gravity. And we talked a little bit about the idea that that doesn't necessarily hold true for all locations, that what that acceleration is depends on where we are, but if we can isolate the effect of gravity, all objects experience the same constant acceleration. And that's the key point from the beginning part here, right? From his experiments, Galileo concluded that the effects of air resistance can be neglected, then all objects in free fall have the same constant acceleration. And then on Friday, we started quantifying that a little bit, and we said that if we look at the average of the acceleration caused by gravity here on Earth at several different locations, we get a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. And we talked about that if, you know, if it's 9.81 meters per second squared, that means that gravity causes the velocity of an object to change by 9.81 meters per second for every second that goes by, right? And we use the lowercase g to represent that acceleration value. And with the guided example, section or 3.12, we saw that we can still use those equations of constant acceleration that we introduced in chapter or section 3.2 because gravity causes constant acceleration, it's just that it's a specific constant acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared, if we can isolate the effect of gravity and only gravity, okay? Good there. All right, today in the, pr in the course of doing the lab and uh, in the course of doing the lab and filling out all the information you need, we're actually going to talk about the last couple sections of the 3.4 packet so we'll get to that today. So keep both of those handy, and then uh, we will uh, get our business for today. All right, first though, I'm going to collect some data for us. Uh, first, I'm gonna change the sampling rate here from 20 samples per second to 50 samples per second. Whoa. But only for 2.5 seconds. Okay. And I will zoom in here. Uh, if you're watching the class recording, you don't get to see the zoom in, but sorry, you know, that's what you get for not being here, so. All right. First experiment, is, or first uh, set of data is one that you should know very well by now, okay? So, Luke, do you, uh, you got the cursor there, okay? And whenever you're ready, go ahead and start it up. Okay, so, so pretty good, pretty close, all right? So this is the graph that we used in the last lab, the acceleration on the incline lab. It also shows up here, right, in the bottom right-hand corner, so we've been analyzing that for a while, okay? First, is this constant acceleration? Is the motion of the car constant acceleration? Two ways we can tell, right? What's one way that you can tell me that this is constant acceleration? Luke? It has a linear slope on which graph? Velocity. So velocity is a straight line, right, during this section. And we know that the slope of the velocity graph tells us what, Luke? The acceleration, okay? The other way we can tell that this is constant acceleration is because, what's the other way we can tell this is constant acceleration? Luke, go ahead. Position graph is parabolic, right? And we said that's another that's another case or another indicator of constant acceleration. Okay, good there. All right. 
Uh, we're going to save this. Okay. So put that in the file cabinet and start with run two. All right. Today, I'm going to change it a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the motion detector off of the top of the ramp. And I'm going to put it flat on the table, facing upward. Then I'm going to take this volleyball and right above the motion detector, I'm going to toss it up and I'm going to catch it just like that. Okay? All right, Luke. Whenever you're ready. It's good work by me. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. So. All right. So, first, let's analyze this graph. Is it constant acceleration? Yes. Two ways we can tell. What are the two ways we can tell? Parabolic position graph and linear velocity graph. Okay? All right. The position graph, let's start with that. Okay? Uh, what did I actually do with the ball according to the position graph? Right, good. I like dropped it a little bit, then threw it upward, right? It goes up and comes back down. And again, when I caught it, I like tried to bring it back to the same level. Did I bring it back to the same level? Yeah, not too bad, right? Kind of starts, you know, it starts and ends pretty much the same spot here and here, okay? Go from there, all right? Good? All right. First page of your lab, first page of your lab, that looks, first page of your lab looks like this. Well, you can't see it, but it's And down at the bottom, there's a place that says, think about the changes in motion that will undergo, okay? Oh, uh, instead of for you guys having to think about it, here they are, all right? So, your position graph looks like a parabola, okay? Does it ever go below the x axis, or does it ever go below the x axis? No, because that would mean that the ball went where? Past the reference points. That doesn't happen, right? Uh, don't worry about numbers so much. Just sketches, shapes, right? We go up and we come back down, right? Doesn't quite start at the x axis because I'm a little bit above the reference point, okay? But it goes up and comes back down. The velocity graph shows this familiar shape, right, that we have seen before. If we talk about that shape a little bit, right, the velocity graph starts off how? Starts off where, I should say that? At zero, right? Ball starts at rest, okay? Then, Brett, like you said, the first thing that I actually do with the ball is what? Take it, well, don't exactly drop it, I just take it down a little bit, right? And that shows up as a little bit of a negative velocity on our velocity graph, right? But then there's this sharp increase, right, into the positive direction. What was happening there? That's me throwing it, because when I throw it, what happens to the velocity of the ball? It increases. I'm sorry, I'm going to, uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't lose this by accident, I'm going to file cabinet this. I, strange things happen, Luke, strange thing. All right, so I, it shows a very sharp increase right at the beginning. That's me throwing it until we get here, right? What do we observe happens to the velocity graph at that point in time? Starts to decrease in what? We would say there is a decrease in hmm. what kind of graph is that? Velocity. It's a velocity graph, right? So from the point that I have highlighted, right, from here to here, what's happening to the velocity of the object? It's decreasing. Right? It is slowing down, but it's still going which way? It's still going up because these velocity values are all above the x-axis. They're still positive, right? Then 
When we get here, where does that happen? Top of the motion, right? Because at just for one instant, right, it has to go through zero. Then, from here to here, right? Actually, from here to here, what's happening there? Speeding up, but going in the negative direction. Even though the ball is still above the positive or above the motion detector, it's traveling downward now, which is the negative direction, right? And then the last section of the graph, from here to here, right? Actually, from here to here, right? That's me catching it, right, and bringing it to rest very quickly. Okay. If we compare it to the car graph. Right? Two things. What's different about the two graphs? First, they're similar because they're showing us constant acceleration, parabolic position graphs, linear velocity graphs. But, Brett, what's the one difference? The slope, yeah, I'm sorry, that is a big difference, right? Blue is a much more shallow slope than orange is, okay? What else is different about them? The direction, right? They both did exactly the th same thing, right? They both show an initial increase in speed, but one increases in the positive direction, one increases in the negative direction, right? Then they both show a decrease in speed during this section right here, right? It's just that one's decreasing in the positive direction, the other one's decreasing in the negative direction, right? If we look at the motion and examine what was actually happening, they're basically doing the same thing, but based on where we put the reference point, directional system, that causes a change in the graph. Good there. All right. On page two, first I'm going to show you back to run two. All right. On page two of your lab, on page two of your lab, uh, you guys just uh, listen. People watching the recording will see this. On page two of your lab, down at the bottom, there is data analysis data table. We're going to fill that data table out together. Okay? So I'm going to start with I'm going to start with this point actually this point right here. Okay? So, we already kind of examined this graph, right? What point does that represent in the flight of the ball? The top, okay? Now, before we start filling things in, right, let's go with the data that we actually have, okay? We know that at the top of the motion, what should the velocity of the ball be? Zero. It should be zero. But, remember, we only take data, or the motion detector only takes data every time it clicks. So we may have missed the actual top, right? And in this case, we did, because this is the closest value I could find to zero, okay? It's pretty close to zero. We're pretty close to the top, but not exact. That's fine. So second row on your data table, right? It says volleyball top of motion. The recorded velocity that we have is negative 0.072. That occurred at a time of 0 0.92. That's not 0 0.92 seconds into its flight, right? That's 0 0.92 seconds after data collection began, right? But we're just going to use that to keep track. And then it recorded a position of 0 0.762 meters. So we're 0 0.762 or 76.2 centimeters above the reference point. Okay. Good with those three. All right, next, I'm going to show you the acceleration graph. Because on the front page, we didn't plot the, we didn't sketch the acceleration graph yet, right? Okay, so I'm gonna change my position. I'm gonna change my position graph to acceleration. All right, so this is what the acceleration graph looks like. 
first. It starts at zero. Then there's the big spike upward. But then it drops down. And for a while, what do we see about that acceleration value? In this little section, I should use this, right? In this little section right through here, right? It's fairly constant, right? Then we have the big spike back upward, and finally ending up back at zero. Because, there's no, where does that spike correspond with on my velocity graph? That's my hand, right? During that time, the acceleration wasn't caused by gravity. The acceleration was being caused by my hand. So, right when it's in the air, right, and we'll see that in just a second. That's where we're going to go, right? So, we, going back here, finding that spot again, which was 0.96. Is that what we were point nine? What was the time that we recorded? Point nine two. Okay. So I'm gonna go here. Okay. Nope. Here. All right. So there's point nine two again. Okay. And the recorded acceleration value during that time negative ten point one, which we'll see in a second. Is okay. So that's the recorded acceleration value during that time. Now, right, go ahead. Yeah, record just that whole number. Yeah, we can just do it like right off there. Okay. All right, so one thing I want to make point of before we go any further. The velocity at that point is zero. But does that mean that the acceleration needs to be zero? Remember, velocity tells us what's happening now Acceleration is what tells us what's going to happen next. Just because the ball is currently stopped, which it is up at the top, doesn't mean it's going to stay stopped. So we can have a zero velocity and a non-zero acceleration. It means we're currently at rest, but we're not going to stay at rest. So that's perfectly fine. Okay? All right. Good there with those four. Okay. I'm going to cheat just a little bit because I know what it's supposed to turn out as and I know more what I'm looking for. And the next spot I'm going to pick on this graph is right, if I can find it. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Next spot I'm going to pick on this graph is right here. Okay? So, even though it's not at the peak of that velocity graph, this is pretty much right after I did what? right after I let it go, right? First row of your data table on page two of your lab, right? Immediately after hands. So we're gonna call this immediately after hands, okay? The time, 0 0.70 seconds. Again, that got 0 0.70 seconds into its flight. That's 0 0.70 seconds after data collection began. The velocity at that point in time, 2.070. First row of that same data table that we were filling in before. Right, that's it, that page, first row. Yep. So here's your, again, here's your time, right, down here, bottom right. This is what the velocity was at that time, and then that's what the acceleration was at that time. And then I'm going to switch my acceleration graph back into a position graph. And the position that that corresponded to was 0.538 meters above the reference point. Good there? All right. The next point we're going to pick, okay, we said that it was it, it left my hands at 0 0.70 seconds and it reached the top of the motion at 0 0.92 seconds, which is a time of 0.22 seconds, right? So I'm going to go 0 0.22 seconds after the top, okay? 
So that should take me to 1.14. There we go. Okay. So, and if we look on the velocity graph, that's pretty much right before what happens. That's right before I catch it. Okay. So the time, 1.14 which is the same interval as we went from the first point to the middle, going from the middle to the last. Okay. The position, 0.521 meters. The velocity, negative 2.105. Okay. Got those three. And then I will change my position graph. I can find my mouse. I will change my position graph back to the acceleration graph, and we have a measured acceleration at that point of negative 8.971. Alright, good there. Okay. I want to use this data table to highlight or illustrate a couple of the things that show up in the packet. Your 3.4 packet. So grab, wait, sorry, about that. Back me over before I do that. All right. Next, page three of your lab. Page three of your lab. So flip it over to page three. Okay. There are some graphical analysis things that the lab asks us to do. The first is to find the slope of the velocity graph. Because if we find the slope of the velocity graph, what are we what are we getting? The acceleration, right? So I've highlighted this section of the velocity graph. Okay. Analyze curve fit on velocity. Right? So it's just highlighting from this bracket here to this bracket here. Looks pretty straight to me. And those are the values that we get. Okay. So you got the value for m, you got the slope, right? And then you have the value for the y-intercept of that line, okay? And then we can use those terms to get ourselves an equation that represents the velocity of that object during that time. Remember, it's a generic y equals mx plus b equation, but what's on the y-axis of this graph specifically? Velocity. velocity. So instead of y equals mx plus b, right, b equals you have an m value, you have a slope value, right? And then what's on the x-axis? Time, right? So instead of x, t, right? Plus 8.744. Good, go ahead. That's an average acceleration, right? Because we're fitting a lot. Good there. Okay. And then the last thing it asks us to do is to just straight up calculate the average acceleration, right? So I'm going to cancel this. And I'm just going to highlight this section down here, right, where we said the acceleration was fairly constant, right? I'm going to go analyze statistics for the acceleration graph. And then if I pop this up, okay, what number off of that table do we want to give us the average acceleration during that highlighted section? The mean, right? And so that will be, right, negative 9.342 meters per second squared. All right, good with those values. Okay, using that information, let's highlight a couple of things in your section 3.4 packet. Yes. Yeah, this isn't going to take long. It's just illustrating what some of these concepts are saying. Right. So, 
Page one of your 3.4 package shows this girl being tossed up into the air with a blanket, a bunch of people holding a blanket, right? And it says, freely falling objects are always accelerated. So, looking at the graphs and looking at our numbers, right, we said that the spot that's highlighted in gray, right, I know it's a little hard to see, it's not like zoomed in, right, but that's the point from when I let the ball go to right before it got back to my hands. Freely falling because it's under the influence of gravity, okay? Was it accelerating that entire time? Two ways we can tell, right? Was the velocity graph changing? Right? The value of the velocity graph was continuously changing during that time. But also on the acceleration graph, what do we see about the measured accelerations during that time? They're all fairly constant, right? So yeah, it was constantly accelerating, even though at some points it was going up, and some points it was going down. And even though sometimes it was slowing down and sometimes it was speeding up, the acceleration was constant the entire time, right? So freely falling objects, when they are under the influence of gravity, are always accelerating. It doesn't matter whether they're going up or whether they're going down. It doesn't matter whether they're speeding up or slowing down. Always, always, always accelerating. It doesn't matter what we do to the object. Here, I threw the object upwards, and gravity was still causing it to accelerate. But even if I would have thrown the object downward, gravity would still cause that constant acceleration. Okay? Good there. This point we've illustrated a couple times already. Page three, page three, of your packet on 3.4. We said that there were two ways for us to tell that those graphs represent constant acceleration. What are the two ways that we can tell that those graphs represent constant acceleration? Position is parabolic, right? But uh, velocity is, it's, if, Position is parabolic, velocity would be linear. Right? <laughs> it's right here, too. So, <laughs> so, right, like it says at the top of page three of your packet, position and velocity change differently in free fall. Position and velocity continuously change in free fall, but because of the relationship between acceleration and velocity, and then the re relationship between position and velocity, right? Velocity increases linearly with time. Now, that relates to this ball that they dropped from rest up at the top here, the picture, figure 3.25, that's right next to that description. We could change one word there, right? Instead of saying velocity increases linearly with time, what should we change increases to? Mm -hmm. How about more generally? Because sometimes it could increase but sometimes it could also decrease. So velocity changes linearly with time, right? Because that's what acceleration means. But then distance increases with time squared. Again, instead of just increases, right? We could, change, we could make that changes with time squared. That's a parabolic relationship, or sometimes we refer to that as a quadratic relationship, hence it is a quadratic equation, okay? Good there? Last thing, if you look at the data table on page two of your lab, data table, page two of your lab, where we filled in the time, the velocity, the position, and the acceleration, okay? We established that the top of the motion, the velocity is pretty close to zero, right? What was the velocity when it left my hands that we measured from the table? Right, 2.070. The velocity when it got back to my hand was negative 2.105. So pretty much the same speed but a different direction, okay? 
parabolas are symmetrical around the central axis. That central axis runs through the starting point or the highest point. The highest point is where the velocity of that object is equal to zero. As we can see here in this data table, right, we verified it with our experimental data, but it shows you here, right, the flight of an object under the influence of gravity is symmetrical. It slows down on the way up, and it speeds up on the way down. How much? Exactly the same. Why? Because what's causing all of those things to happen? Gravity. And gravity causes a constant acceleration, whether it's going up or whether it's coming down. So when it says symmetry of motion, right? Yes, it makes objects under the influence of gravity in free fall make those nice parabolic graphs for position. But if we look at any factor about the motion, whether it be position, whether it be velocity, whether it be acceleration, we will see symmetry around the top point. That if we go one second, or in our case, 0.22 seconds before it gets to the top, which is what the top row of your data table was, and 0.22 seconds after it hits the top, notice pretty much everything's the same. The only thing that's different is what? The sign, the direction that it's going. Right, good. You good? Pretty much the same thing, okay? Except, so, right, it was something like this. Okay. It would look pretty much, sorry, if you're watching the recording, I threw the ball in the air and then let it hit all the way down to the floor, okay? Right, it would pretty much look the same until it got to the x axis. The parabola would continue below the x axis, same parabola, all right? But it just didn't exist before that because we didn't start looking at it before that. You know what I'm saying? So the parabola would continue. It would still be symmetrical. It's just that part of that parabola didn't exist because we didn't measure it beforehand. Okay. All right. Good there. Okay. Let's go back to the lab. And... Let's take a look at the rest of this data table. So, Lisa, I know you're in eagerly anticipating the beach ball, all right? So, let's go back here, pull this up, okay? And we'll go to run three, okay? Which recorded for some weird reason, okay? But uh, we're gonna get rid of that data. I'm gonna go here and change this back to position, all right? I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see it a little better. All right, so up here in the sink, I have a beach ball that doubles as a globe, because it's science class, you know, maybe, right? A regular old red, yellow, and white beach ball is not going to cut it, right? So, uh, although this globe is not, geo or I guess geologically it's correct, politically it's not correct, uh, it has some countries that don't exist anymore on it, so. What? Uh, no, we're in the transition period between the Soviet Union and Russia, as the Confederation of Independent States. So it was a very, I mean, it was like a very limited time that this beach ball was available. So, you know, consider it, you know, a collector's item, I guess. So, But regardless, right, we will use it for our lab today. So Luke, do you have the uh, cursor there? All right, whenever you're ready, Luke, go ahead, start us up. Yeah, let's do that again. I lost it at the end there. Did lost, although we could use that, but it's going to bother me, so go ahead. <laughs> All right, so. Okay. First, constant acceleration. Because? Parabolic position graph, linear velocity graph. Although we're going to find out here in a second that it's not actually constant acceleration. Okay? All right. Let's go here, all right, and let's find the velocity value closest to zero, 
and the suspicion that was going to be it, and it was. Okay, so data table, page two of your graph or your lab. Okay, beach ball, top of motion. Here it is. So there's the position. There's the velocity, and it occurred at 0.94 seconds after data collection began. Right, not in its flight. And then, everybody got this down? And then, we'll change position to acceleration, and the acceleration value during that time, negative 7.526. Just after hands, we'll go here, okay? So, uh, fourth row of your data table, beach ball, immediately after hands, okay? Point seven six seconds for the time, the velocity 1.41, the acceleration at that time negative 7.85. And the position, all right, 0.535 meters above the reference point. Okay. And then, oops, I should save this. And then I'm going to change this position back and graph back to acceleration. Uh, time interval between those first two data points. What was it? What was the 0 0.76 to 0 0.92? The other one? 0.94, so 0 0.18. Okay. So then 1.04, that sound good? So 1.12, all right. So there's information about 1.12 seconds after data collection began, which is the same time interval between the first and the top, or between when I threw it in the top and when I top and when I caught it. position and 0.546. Right, good. I think it was. No, was 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 it positive? It was actually positive, but yeah, but it's really small. Okay. So, quick. Yep. For this one or for the end? Okay. 1.12. All right. So, questions. One, is this as symmetrical? as the volleyball's flight was. If you look at your velocities, right, the initial velocity when it left my hand was 1.41, the velocity when it got back to my hand was negative 1.28. So not nearly as symmetrical, right? It was close, but not as close as the volleyball was. Also, if you look at the acceleration graph, and I'm gonna kind of move this out of the way so you can see the graph as a whole, during this section, during the highlighted section here, is the acceleration constant during that section right there? 
Not really. Good afternoon, Demons. Just a quick announcement here at the end of the day. Just a reminder that uh, Jostens is going to be here tomorrow during lunch periods in the cafeteria. So if you have a ring order, you should bring them to Jostens tomorrow during your lunch period. This is the day to take advantage of all the order day discounts and promotions that Mr. Torbert talked to you about at your sophomore class assembly Page three of your a lab. short time ago. So again, Jostens will be here tomorrow during the lunch periods. Thanks, have a great day, Demons. So page three of your lab, right? A couple more bits of information about this beach ball graph. So there is the parameters of the linear fit for the beach ball, right? Remember, it's a velocity time graph, so V equals, we got negative 7.425, 9, okay. And then, we got this, you get here? All right, and then, right, again, highlighting this section right through here of the red graph, analyze, statistics for the acceleration, and we have a mean of negative 7.405. All right, good there? Okay, so real quick, I'll answer a couple of questions for you, okay? Question number two. Question number two, it says, how closely does the slope, right? how closely does the average acceleration value compare to the slope of the time versus velocity graph for the volleyball? So for the time versus velocity graph for the volleyball, the slope was negative 9.5 something, right? And the average acceleration was negative 9.3. So how close are they? Pretty close, right? Should they be? Because what does the slope on a velocity graph tell you? The acceleration. What does the average acceleration tell you? The acceleration, right? They're both telling you the same thing. They're both ways to calculate the same measurement or the same quantity of a motion, just different ways to calculate. Let's do one real quick, right? Go ahead. That's getting into question three and four. So, okay. uh, yeah. Bring the lab back tomorrow.